Hey everybody, for November, we are gonna see if the planner pad works for someone with ADHD. Up first, I will go through the planner pad before using it so we can get some initial thoughts, maybe some ideas flowing. And then the end of the video will be after I have used it for two or three weeks, letting you know what I think of it at that point. The planner pad is only available on Amazon. They do have a website where you can get more details about how to use it. There's some videos, um, explanations, and it tells you over and over and over again to buy from Amazon. I will leave the link to it, the website and my Amazon associate link in the description box if you are interested. The planner pad is available in both undated or dated. The undated only comes in the small size in black, which is what I got, and it only comes as a spiral. And this was $31.49. I'm not gonna go over all the prices because there's so many options, but you can get this size or the eight and a half by 11 as a calendar year, a July start, or an October start. You can get the black, or there's also a green, and what they call their seasonal version, which has like printed stuff on the, the pages, like pictures. And these are all spiral bound, but you can also get what they call their loose version in the dated ones. And it is their seven hole system. So it's not like an A5 or a three ring binder. It's like their own system. It might be like a Franklin Covey. I'm not familiar with all of the ring designs, but it's not like one that you can easily find everywhere. Like I've got a bunch of A5 binders that I switch out my calendars and my goal planning system with. But this is like its own special thing. Okay, that was long and rambly about the loose version of it. So let's get into the planner pad. So when you open it up, you have this kind of like informational sheet of paper. So it says, stay focused, stay organized, get more done. It works like a funnel to help you set and accomplish your priorities. So the top section is categorize what needs to be done now and in the future. Section two, prioritize daily things to do. Then three, schedule specific times to get things done, including activities, meetings, and appointments. And they have a link here, which takes you to their website. And you can watch a short video on how the little funnel system works. So they have that. And then this is the, as I said, the undated personal size start anytime. And over here, we've got our personal information, pretty standard stuff, easy to use step-by-step -step guidelines. I'm not going to read all of this. I did read it all, but I don't think you need me to read it to you. It does give some suggestions for the back. They have a goals, projects, calendar section, and a notes section. So they just give you some ideas of how you could use that. And they go over more specifically how to use the funnel. And more instructions on how everything funnels down. Then we have important phone numbers, which is apparently a thing over here that you're supposed to put like a number and then you can put the number here. So you always have the most updated numbers. But for phone numbers, y'all, I just use Google contacts and keep that updated. And it's always with me. So this important phone numbers page would not be very helpful to me. Then we have three calendar years, 2022, 2023, 2024. And then you have that spots, splots, you have splots, which is a combination of spots and spaces with an L apparently. You have a section for 2022 planning. So you've got 
six months here, six months here, and all of the days. Then you have the same for 2023 and 2024. My first thoughts, what are you going to write in this space? There's not enough room. And then when they put in stuff like here we have Columbus Day and Thanksgiving Day in Canada, you can't really fit anything else in there. So not sure how you would use these. Then we have holidays. All right, so if we have holidays here, why do we have a list of holidays here? This seems like redundant and like I don't need that. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you like having the holidays here and here? Or do you think just one page? Then we got our time zones, which I will never use this. I just use Google. And then we get into the actual funnel. So it says planning for the week of major goal this week. Then we have our weekly list of activities by categories. So you can have seven different categories. So you might have like a work project one, work project two, home, kids, school, uh, content, I don't know. And then you have your daily things to do and appointments. So what you would do is in each of your categories, write down everything you need to get done. And then you would go through and fill out, well, I want to do this on Tuesday and I want to do this on Wednesday and that on Monday, whatever. And then you'd actually plan them out on your schedule. One thing I really like about this is on your daily things to do, they have a line, a little space, and then a big line. So you can actually like check something off or if you have to move something, you can do like a little arrow, you know, like bullet journal style, you can mark things. I really appreciate that. I like being able to cross things off, but also being able to see what I did. So like a lot of times, if I need to cross things off, I use a highlighter so I can still see what it was. And over here, you have a notes calls column. And this is where you put those references to those numbers that you're keeping up there. But I really, I don't make a lot of calls or have to do a lot of calls. So it would mostly be a notes section for me. And then you have a spot here to write down your weekly expenses, which is kind of cool to keep track of that. Or you could do like, if you're doing a no spend, you could list out, you know, each day of the week and if you spent or not. So a little bit of flexibility there. Or you could put a sticker over that and make it whatever you wanted. So a lot of flexibility with this. I'm not sure how I'm going to use the seven categories yet. I'm going to say probably home, runs on espresso, photography, uh, fitness. I don't know. Haven't figured that out yet. It'll, and you know what? The nice thing with this is it can change. If you do seven categories this week and you don't like them, you can do seven different categories next week. Now, I was reading and I watched the video, so I'm prepared. This little dashed line here. If you have stuff that you didn't get to, but you want to do later, and you don't want to have to like rewrite a bunch of stuff. You just fold this down. It's like a little dog ear. And then you know which page you need to go back to. Then when you go back to that page and you finish the task, you cut off the corner. So that's how you know if you have something that you need to go back to or if you've completed everything you want for that week. And the instructions, the video, they all say that, you know, some of this stuff you may realize later that you don't need to do it anymore. So you can just cut that corner off. So I like that idea. Not sure how I would use it or like it in practice. Okay, so there are a bunch of these pages. I'm assuming 52 weeks because there's 52 weeks in a year. 
And when we get to the back, they turn yellow, which I guess is kind of like a, hey, you got to get a new one. And then we go into a goals projects section. And there are 12 of these goals projects. And they have the days of the week across the top. So these could be a monthly calendar if you wanted a monthly view. You just have to write in, you know, like if this was one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. You understand what I'm saying, right? All right. Otherwise, you could use these for goals. I did flip back to the front to kind of show you what they set up here. So the goals project calendar pages are perfect for customizing your needs. You can create columns and boxes using the horizontal and vertical lines as a guide. Divide pages into subjects, and they have the option of creating the monthly calendars. And you could also use this to collect business, personal information, ideas, anything you want to remember. And kind of zoomed in a little bit so you can see their little like example there with the quotes and ideas. And they cut out something from the newspaper and stuck it in there. And flipping to the back again, we have notes pages. There are 14 of these note pages and they've got like a column here and a bigger section there. So you could do that, um, whatever that like fancy note taking method is that I don't follow. And flipping back to the front, they just say that the note section is a writing space to capture discussion topics, meeting notes, etc. And they say attach an index tab for each subject and the tabs will motivate you to write more. I feel like you guys are crooked here. Let me straighten you out a bit. Feels a little bit better. And then they recommend putting a three by five card in your pocket each day. When you're not near your planner pad, you can write down reminders on the card and then transfer those into your book. So some ideas on how to use their little planner pad. And we will go to the back. So in the back, we have calendars 2021, 2022, 2023, and a change of address form, I guess you could send to the company, and a reordering order, a reordering, an order form, even though they no longer take orders on their website. So I'm guessing this will be removed in future versions because according to their website, the only place to purchase is Amazon. So now the paper, the yellow and the white have like slightly different textures. The white is a little more smooth than the yellow, but it's not like Erin Condren paper. It feels and looks kind of thin, and we will make sure we do a 10 pest, a 10 pest. We will do a pen test, of course, to see how the paper holds up to different types of pens. Okay, I have an array of writing utensils. I have a ballpoint pen from Archer and Olive, a gel pen from Erin Condren, and I've got an Erin Condren ultra fine tip and a regular dual tip marker. I got a Huhu dot pen. I have a mild liner and an Erin Condren highlighter. We're going to start in the back on the yellow paper with this uh, order form because I don't think anyone is going to want this. I got all this potential that's deep inside of me.
successful because they try to be. They sit there being just meant to because you're trying things. And they just want you to settle and do the right thing. So get a good job, don't slack off. Wake up every morning, make a good impression on your boss. Don't do anything that I wouldn't do. And when you make your money, make sure you don't spend it too soon. Huh. Fuck that, I'll do what I want to do. I got a different path from everyone and that includes you. Who are you to tell me how to live? Okay, so everything went on nicely. We're now going to see if anything... Oh. So the Uhuhu dot pen smeared. And I thought it had enough time to dry, but we'll see if a little more time gets a little drier because it was still pretty wet. Nope, still smears. All right, now flipping over... And I can kind of make out that there's something on the other side. I can't tell what it is. It probably doesn't help that I've got all this print here. So on the yellow paper, everything but the dot pen seemed to work really well. For the white paper, I'm going to test at the top of the 2022 planning, which will be on the calendar side. I figure if I am giving this away, that will be an area that people won't use. So that's my thought process. I don't know yet if I am giving this away. If I like it, I'm going to keep it. But you never know. I might decide to give it away at the end of all of this. Like, I would have loved to have given away that ADHD planner because it was crap. I should, I take that back. I would not have put that on anyone because it was crap. It actually got put in the recycle bin to be recycled. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go and watch October's ADHD planning video. I'll link it somewhere whoop, up there. And you can see that awful thing. All right, so smear test. Again, just a smearing on the dot pen. And I did do a metallic one, so maybe a regular color one, non-metallic. Let's see, I think I have, here, I have this non-metallic here. That one, I'm guessing, probably is not going to smear because it's a little different ink. Yeah. The metallic dot pens will smear. The regular ones will not. And let's look. So we definitely can see all of those. And I started off with like a light touch and got a little heavier. Um, highlighters, I can kind of faintly see like the beginning and the end. And that's about it. I can't really, I can see a little bit of whatever that one is. Which I think that is the ultra... Yeah, the ultra fine. I'm a little surprised that that one came through a little bit, but there you go, pen test. Now I will start using the spread and let you know in the next section of the video how that went. Okay, so I used the planner pad for three weeks. The first week was a little trial and error. I used only pencil because I had no idea what I was doing. Even after I read the instructions several times and watched the video on their website, I struggled to come up with the seven categories for the top row. And no, I did not realize that I didn't actually need to fill all seven. I tried to put all of the to do's onto the appointments and it felt super busy to me and quite frankly overwhelming. 
My first thought while using it for the first week was, this could work, but it needs some practice. Or I really needed to think about my categories. And that's one thing that going into week two and three, I really thought about my categories and kind of changed them up because they weren't working for me. So that is a great tip, no matter what planner, what planner system, what notebook, whatever you're using, don't be afraid to change it up. You are not stuck with what you pick for the first week, the first day, the first whatever. My other thought was I need to not assign the to-dos to the appointment section. Besides being messy, it felt redundant, and I also hate time blocking and assigning tasks to a certain time. I need a daily to-do list and the freedom of when to do it during the day. Don't tie me down. I get it though, time blocking really works for some people. So if it works for you, go for it. Put your to-dos on your appointments. For me though, I rebel against it. If I put something on here to do, I'll be like, I'm not doing that. Don't tell me what to do, I'll do that tomorrow or whatever. So that is week one, my first initial thoughts. Let's move to week two. For week two, I updated my categories a bit, and these ended up working out much better for me. I carried these through to week three, and if I was going to keep using the planner pad, I would probably use these for a while. I also tried highlighter and color coding. I loved the pop of color from the highlighter, but the color coding got to be a little bit too much. I always seem to try color coding, use it for a little bit, and then end up not using it. In week two, I realized I needed the days of the week above the appointment section. The to-dos have it, but when I was filling in the appointments, I put all of Thursday's meetings on Friday, and I had to white it all out and move it over to Thursday. So... So I made a note to try day of the week stickers in week three, which I did, and they were super helpful. So week three is pretty much the same as week two. I kept the same categories. I took those categories, put my to-dos down here, and then the appointments were like, Meetings I had, my workouts, um, let's see what else. Oh, I did put my cleaning tasks on the days that I wanted to do them. At about the time I usually do them, I kind of have a routine. And let's see what else. Oh, I did, I tracked expenses in this column over here. This part, I just made little notes about my thoughts while using this planner. So. Here's a little better view of week three. And I will tell you, again, putting these up there really, really helped. So what are my final thoughts on this planner? First, I will do the bad. I feel there is a steeper learning curve than a regular planner. There are no days of the week on the appointment section. The appointment section runs from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., which for a lot of people, their days go beyond 8 p.m. or they start before 7. There are no monthly calendars, and this is only available on Amazon. I will go ahead and put the link in the description box if you are interested. It is my Amazon associate link, and I may receive a commission if you purchase it. So now the good. It is extremely flexible. Like I said, you can change up your categories. You don't have to fill all of them in. You've got a checklist spot on the to-dos. You've got appointments. You can pretty much use these columns over here for whatever you need. So super, super flexible. 
And I kind of mentioned this next good part. There is a spot to cross off the to-dos, which has been lacking in some of these other planners. So you can see the little, there's a little break in the line there. Saturday and Sunday have their own column. They do not share a space with each other, which is probably my biggest pet peeve in a lot of planners, is they put Saturday and Sunday in the same spot. Some of us have a ton of work we do on Saturdays and Sundays and not as much during the week because I have a separate work planner. I don't use a lot of like the weekday stuff except for things outside of work hours. This is the undated version, which means you can use it as needed. So if you're not busy one week, who cares? Don't use it. If you're super busy, use it. There are dated versions of this, so if you want a dated version, you can also have that. Uh, no monthly calendar. You can be creative with color coding, dot markers, highlighters. I'm sure you could do stickers or washi in this as well. I just didn't. It is a reasonable price. This undated version is $32. It only comes in the personal size. And the dated ones, the personal or executive size, are $34. So if you use it for a year, that's really cheap. That's like half the price of most of the planners that I buy. Now, you're going to say, Jenna, you put no monthly calendar as a good and bad. Yep, because some people really love a monthly overview. Some of us, including myself, Never look back at our monthly spreads. It really is one of those things some people love or need, and um, and some other people are indifferent to. So final verdict. Would this work for someone with ADHD? Yes. Would I use this? Yes. If I wasn't in love with my daily planner, I would totally use this for my personal life. It is flexible enough to use however you need it. If you don't need like the expenses column over here, you can make it a habit tracker with some dot markers or highlighters. You can throw some washi between the sections. You can put day of the week stickers, or I bet you you could use a white gel pen to write them on the black line. Is a category not working for you anymore? Drop it the next week. A slow week? Skip it if you have the undated version. I really debated keeping this one. I thought I could use it for work, but it is a little too much for my work planner. I mostly need a to-do list with dates. Plus, I need a dated planner for work. Ain't no one got time to fill in these dates. So. Since I'm not going to use this, I am going to give it away. I'm going to remove the weeks that I wrote on, but you will still get 48 and a half weeks, a half week because this start has week three on the back. It's undated, so you can use it anytime. So to enter, let me know in the comments your favorite feature of the planner pad by November 18th. 2022 at 11.59 p.m. Arizona time for a bonus entry, be publicly subscribed to my channel. I will select a winner over the weekend of November 19th and hopefully, cross my fingers, mail it out the week of November 21st. You must be a U.S. resident. Giveaway is all me, runs on espresso to help you run, plan, achieve. It is not sponsored by PlannerPad or Google or YouTube, you know, all that legalese. I will put the same stuff in the description box. Okay, that is all I've got for you today. Please share this with someone who would be interested in the planner pad. Give it a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more ADHD planners. And don't forget, Comment if you want a chance to win the planner pad. Until next time, I hope your planning 
and coffee are strong. Five, ten year plans are contagious. I attack that shit, I'm tenacious. And if you ain't, get the fuck out of my way.